Because you can't hear anything. Sir, we can't hear anything. We can't hear anything. Check, check. How's it now? Check, test, check. Yeah, I can hear, right? Is it clear? Loud and clear? Okay. Yes. Okay, thanks for pointing that out. Um, Arila, Arilia, thank you. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so I was just reading from Isaiah 49 and verses uh, 14 to 16 where uh, the people of God are saying, you know, Zion said, the Lord is forsaken, the Lord is forgotten. And so, you know, um, in, in response to that, the Lord is asking, you know, can a mother forget a nursing child? Can a woman forget a nursing child and not have compassion, compassion on the son of a womb? The answer obviously is no. And the Lord is saying, surely they may forget. You know, there is a possibility that a human mother might forget um, the nursing child or not have compassion and the Lord is saying I yet I will not forget you see I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands your walls are continually before me you know? so um, the Lord's assurance reminder actually is that well he will not forget it means his love for us is uh, is of that quality right even though you know we are used to experiencing firsthand um, the love and appreciation of human beings but the lord's love is so much more that he's saying he's reminding i will not forget and he's also reassuring us you know i will not forsake okay so um even before we get into the, today's class for us to just understand this is who god is right the love of uh, is is love is more than an earthly parent's love right and his compassion for us is more than anything else that we, we could have actually experienced here till now, right? Uh, from a human standpoint. So just want us to remind us of that. Um, and, and let's pray, right? Let's pray. Let's, um, uh, let's thank God, right? Okay, let's, let's pray. Father God, we, we just want to thank you for your awesome, amazing, Lord, intense and immeasurable love. Father God, we thank you for reminding us today that uh, even though like human beings, um, the love of even our parents, even the ones who are closest to us, God, could be deficient, has its limitations, God. But your love, your love for us, God, that, you, that you're reminding us that we are not forgotten. You're reminding us that we are not forsaken. Father God, we thank you that you have that kind of love for us. And Lord, your word says in Romans chapter 4 that God, uh, and verse five, chapter 5 also, God, that, that your love for us, while we were yet sinners, God, uh, you died for us, God. And we see, Lord, in so many other places that while we were yet sinners, Lord, while we were yet the enemies of the cross, oh God, you loved us, God. And so we thank you for this love. We thank you that you care for us, Lord as a heavenly father. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So um, we're going to look at um, you know, this whole topic of... Uh, in the last class, we looked at uh, how God prospered um, the people. We looked at um, you know, some of the Old Testament saints. And um, we also saw people who actually fell because of money. 
okay, because money took a hold of them, right? So today, let's look at um, scripture and places where God, which which shows us that God actually, you know, brought in uh, prosperity. Okay, that it is God who gives material blessings and financial blessings. Okay, so um, rather than just saying, yeah, God prospers people, it's good to look at real instances in the Word of God and, and be assured this is what God did. And when we know that his nature and character does not change, right? If he did it then, he will continue to do it even today, right? So for us to be unshaken in this aspect, okay, like so many other things, okay, the love of God, uh, the grace of God, uh, you know, the mercy of God. We are, we're talking about different facets of the nature of God, the character of God. So we see that when it comes to these things, when it comes to finances, when it comes to material blessings also, you know, the way the Lord expresses himself is through giving. Okay, He's a generous giver. Okay, uh, John 3.16, God so loved that he gave. Right, so the Lord is the one who gives; He's the one who pours out His Spirit upon us. I mean, that's easy for us to grasp. He's the one who gives us gifts of grace, that is spiritual gifts. You know, that is also we see. Okay, it's easy for us to grasp. Okay, He's the one who, uh, you know, takes care of our, our other needs. You know, that's maybe that's also easy for us to grasp. When it comes to you know finances, also we need to be able to grasp this truth that God is a generous giver. Okay, so let's look at some of the examples. Okay, 2 Samuel 6 verses 10 and 12, 10 to 12. Okay, David would not move the ark of the Lord with him into the city of David. But David took it aside into the house of Obed-Edom, the, the Gittite. Verse 11, the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obed Edom and all his household. Okay, so that's what we see. Okay, what did the Ark of the Lord represent? Anyone? In the Old Testament times, what did the Ark represent? You remember, it was taken from the people uh, and then it was from, uh, uh, from David and uh, before David actually, uh, when Samuel was there and, uh, you know, it was taken from there by the Philistines. Okay. And David took it back and he brings it to Obed Edom's house. That's the context. So, what did the ark represent? The ark of God. The presence of God, the power of God, right? The very nature of God Himself, right? Because it was taken to that temple the Philistines had and they kept it overnight. And the next morning they saw that that deity, Dagon, was face down on the, the you know. And uh, decapitated and all that. So we see that the the ark actually was the power and the presence of God, right? In the tabernacle, well, uh, in the in the uh, in the wilderness, the ark of the covenant was kept there, and the priest, the high priest, would go there to the holy of holies. It was there in the holy of holies, and there was, you know, nothing. And the mercy seat was there, and so on. And uh, it was the it represented the pre presence and power of God, and there. God would manifest his presence, not just representative, but it was actually the presence and power of God. Okay, we should not forget that. So verse 11, the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom. Three months, the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. Okay, now in what way did he bless Obed-Edom? Let's look at verse 12. Now it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him because the house of obed uh, all that belongs to him because of the ark of the Lord. Right? All that belonged to him, which means people were blessed, all his belongings. When we say belongings, it means the material things as well, right? So everything was blessed. By God. So what does that what do we learn from that? That God is the one who blesses, right? Or does God is the one who um, increases things in our lives, 
right? He brings the blessing into our lives. He, you know, so we see very clearly that Obed Adam's house, um, he he was he was blessed. It was so apparent that people actually talked about it. Okay, so they said, okay, do you know Obed Adam? The minute the ark came in, you know, there's three months, there's such a change. Right? There's been such a change. Why? The Lord is blessing. And how do we know that? Hey, look at this. You know, look at the things that have been increasing in his life. Look at the kind of the shalom that he's experiencing, and uh, and the joy that is there in the household, and uh, and all his belongings. So it says here, the uh, all that belongs to him because of the ark of the Lord. Verse twelve. The Lord has blessed the house of Obed, and all that belongs to him. So we see that the Lord is the one who blesses. Okay, so we say that in in that uh, instance. Then let's move on. Second Kings chapter four. Okay, Second Kings four. We're looking at Elisha and uh, that incident where the woman uh, of the sons of the prophet. You know, she's a she doesn't have a husband. Her husband is no more, and she cries out. And uh, this is what happens. Right. Let's read verses one to seven. A certain woman. Of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. Okay, so what is the situation? She's in debt. Right? She owes money to someone, probably they borrowed, uh, whatever, they're in bad shape. And she says, The creditor is coming to take my sons to be his slaves, so that you know there's nothing here to give. So, in order to repay, the sons are going to be working there as slaves in order to repay for whatever amount of time, right? So Elisha said to her, verse two, "What shall I do to, for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house?" And she said, "Your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil." Then he said, "Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors. Empty vessels. Do not gather just a." few so elisha has an understanding of what god is about to do and who god is right so who god is and how he's going to intervene elisha has some kind of an understanding so he's saying do not gather just a few go get get vessels don't gather just a few okay so uh, he's, and uh, and the other instruction is this these are empty vessels Okay, not filled vessels, empty vessels, don't gather just a few. Verse 4, and when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, then pour it into all these vessels and set aside the full ones. So I'm just thinking, you know, the this, this lady, poor lady, must have been wondering, you know, what is Elisha saying? Go gather vessels and, uh, you know, pour the oil into the vessels. And he's, he's saying, you know, set aside. She couldn't probably even imagine. What is going to happen? But Elisha was very sure, right? He knew whom he had trusted. He knew who was trust, instructing him. So he's saying, this is what you need to do. So she went from him, shut the door behind her and the sons who, bought, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. Okay. Now it came to pass, because this is the only thing that she had, right? She came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. Okay, so everything is becoming full, 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 and uh, they've gathered all these vessels, and and the, she's saying, "Okay, I need one more now." What does the son say? There is not another vessel, so the oil stopped, ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, "Go sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest." So there was enough to pay the creditor and obviously it must have been a huge amount right so there was enough to pay the creditor there was enough left over to live a comfortable life so she so Elisha says go sell it pay off the creditor and on the rest with the rest of the money you and your sons live okay so what do we learn from this some lessons here that God is a provider Jehovah Jireh is true to his name okay uh, online folks you can also post what do we learn from this 
Yeah, sure. Right, right. So there was nothing, and actually the woman believed. The woman believed the word when there was nothing, right? Hmm. Yeah. So when the, when the, when there's when the answer is not there, when the miracle is not there, but you're believing just the word, and in believing the word and in carrying out that, taking that step of faith, she saw the answer. Yeah, something supernatural happened. Absolutely. Yeah. What else? Okay. Uh, Chaya Paul says faith in the Lord. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think I. I definitely think so because it says there is not another vessel. The minute he said. I don't have another vessel. It says so. The oil ceased, right? So which means that, hang on, <laughs> I have one more, one more tumbler, one more burthen, and the oil would have continued, right? Yeah. So, you know, this this also reveals something about God's heart more than anything, right? God's heart that when He gives, He gives generously. Okay. He's not stingy, he's not holding back, but this is God's heart for his people. Okay, so we we tend to define God according to our experience, yes or no? Yeah, see, this is what I've experienced in life. So God is like this. Okay, when we do that, we are bound to be disappointed. Right? Definitely. We go through a bad time, we go through challenges. And then we we are pressing on, and then we, we we see okay, I don't see the answer in sight. I'm not experiencing, uh, you know, the answer. I'm, I'm I am standing in faith, and time has passed. And then we begin. If we begin to change, alter who God is, our understanding based on our experience, we will definitely be disappointed, right? And 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 our future is going to be, you know, is uh, is going to be in jeopardy, really. If we do that, but if we understand who God is, as He describes Himself, as He introduces Himself through the pages of Scripture, and when we go with that understanding, then everything changes, right? So the spiritual, the understanding, you know, the spiritual actually increases our faith, and because of our faith, the natural changes as well, right? So. Yeah, so the, so the thing is, this is the heart of God, you know, this, and also what we read just now, uh, Isaiah 49, verse 14, 15, you know, talks about the heart of God. And he's saying, you know, I will not forget, I will remember, and this is who I am, right? Matthew chapter 6 uh, and uh, Matthew 7, actually, you know, uh, 7 also talks about that, right? Matthew 7, 7, ask, seek, knock. And then he compares himself to. You know, if you being an earthly father know how to give good gifts, right? You know, no matter how much, you know, how limited an earthly father is, there's some amount of love that the earthly father would have for the child. Okay, so if you being earthly parents, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, you know, how much more is your heavenly father who's perfect in love, who's perfect in wisdom, who's, right? Who's infinite in his strength. So. Uh, we get an understanding. This is who God is, which means He blesses. He causes blessings. So his presence, very presence, causes blessing to happen, and that blessing involves all realm: material, spiritual, emotional, you know, physical, all realms. We need to understand that. Many times we we think of the spiritual. Yes, that's a big part. And we let go of everything else that is affected by the spiritual, right? We let go of this. So we understand that, yes, God is the one who, this is the heart of God. Okay, let's look at one more, right? Um, Luke chapter 5. So we've come to the New Testament, and now, you know, the Lord Jesus, who is the express image of the 
father, as we see in Colossians. He is interacting with his disciples, right? Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 7. So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when he had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. Okay, so we see in the life of Jesus this wonderful miracle, and uh, and we learn so many other things from here as well, right? So, what what happened? There were two boats. They had actually fished all night. They didn't. They hadn't ca caught anything. Okay, so Lord Jesus teaches from the boat. Uh, this is Simon's boat. And after teaching, after he finishes teaching, he says, uh, Simon, why don't you put down your nets for a catch? So. One thing that we find out is that the Lord knew Simon's situation. Okay, the fact that he had had a bad night the previous day, right? So Simon was a fisherman, which means his bread and butter, like his money, would come from selling the fish. Okay, so this was his living. So that previous night he hadn't caught anything, so he must have been in a bad mood. Okay, uh, he must have been tired, and uh, he must have been thinking, okay, now. One day, you know, it's it's a waste. Now, how do I make up for it the next day? Okay, that's how a businessman would think. Okay, today was bad. But tomorrow, you know, how how do I make up for that loss? Okay, uh, because there are so many things. No, bills to be paid, family to be fed. You know, we think only of the fish and this interaction. But then you look at the background. There's so many things going on. Hey, I need to get this. I need to get this. You know, this person's birthday is coming. Uh, I need to buy that. My son would ask this. Now I need to, you know, all these things are there, right? So he's had a bad day. Nothing has come in. So um, the Lord says, launch out into the deep. We are looking at verse 4. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Okay, what happened when he had done this? They caught a great number of fish. That the net was breaking. Okay, again, it talks about it wasn't just one or two, but the net was breaking. So they started signaling to their partners. So, which means now this was a fish business. There were others who were actually partnering with them to catch fish. So they, he calls, they signal the partners to come and help. Um, so they filled both the boats so that they began to sink. So you just think about it two boats full of fish, so heavy that it, it is sinking because they have gone out into the deep to let down the nets and that's how it is. Okay, This again talks about the nature of God. This again talks about the character of God because the Lord Jesus is the express image of the Father. Right? In Him was life and, and He, nothing was made that was made without Him. Right, So, we see that he's a supernatural God, and above all that, he knows our needs. You know, the Lord Jesus taught that, right? He knows your needs, right? So why are you worrying? Right? He knows your needs, and he knows that you have need of these things. So he knows very well, and he cares about fulfilling that particular need. Okay, and then he does it in style. He does it exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask. So here we see that Peter's only response was, Lord, at your word. So someone, something that he's, the Lord spoke, the Lord taught from the boat, okay, something must have triggered something in his heart. Right? Something must have touched him. And he said, at your word, I will let down my net. So what was he going against? 
he was going against his experience like his experience in business in ex his experience in fishing he was going going against all those years of experience and also the most recent one that he's had right the, the previous night was still fresh all night toiled nothing so he was going all against all that for the simple word instruction that he gave okay so that's very powerful because for us also our experience actually you know teaches us something you know we have all this experience and maybe the most recent one was not a very pleasant one right and then we are struggling oh do i understand this about god or do i go fall back on my experience that i just had yesterday last night it seems to define everything my reality right but peter says no at your word i am willing to you know let go of all this that has happened at your word i will go and do it again like um, i don't know people might have asked no these guys fished all night no now that's when the fish are there and that's when you can catch and you know, what is going to change now suddenly the only change was the physical environment was the same the only change was the word of god the only change was the word that jesus released the words of faith and the change was that peter was ready to accept right and he saw the father heart of god he experienced the father heart he experienced the generosity that god has for his people okay so we see that then same peter again when it came to paying taxes okay, when they uh, let's read that matthew chapter 17 okay when they had come to capernaum those who received the temple tax came to peter and said does your teacher not pay the temple tax he said yes and when they had come into the boat i'm sorry when they come to the house jesus anticipated him saying what do you think simon from whom do the kings of the earth take customs or taxes from their sons or from strangers peter said to him from strangers jesus said to him then the sons are free nevertheless lest we offend them go to the sea cast in a hook and take the fish that comes up first and when you have opened its mouth you will find a piece of money take that and give it to them for me and for you okay so here also we see um the supernatural act of the lord jesus but also his willingness to for some of the man made laws which were there meaning the government the tax and everything he was willing to abide by it right we see that okay um with that we come to first timothy 6 and verse 17 Okay, let's let's read that. We you know we we looked at it in our earlier the sessions, First Timothy six and verse seventeen. Okay, so Paul is saying, command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty. What does haughty mean? Not to be proud. Okay, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. who gives us richly all things to enjoy okay what does the living god do gives us richly all things to enjoy okay so the let's come to that a little later but the first part is this those who are rich in this present age peter i mean paul commands he says do not let them be haughty no don't let them be proud why hey i have so much don't be proud because of your belongings of your material wealth okay first thing second thing when you're proud because of your belongings because of so much of wealth that you have it is possible that you put your trust in it meaning i have so much money so i can live tomorrow peacefully or i have so much money i, I can take care of all my needs i don't need to depend on anyone i have so much money so it is possible that you're you 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 put you tend to put your trust in the riches but he's reminding you know these riches they have a quality about them they are uncertain right if you're putting your trust they are uncertain riches they they don't have certainty it's not of eternal 
value. Right? It's, it's not certain. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, you know, these things change. It'll go up, come down. So they are uncertain riches. So don't put your trust in them. Okay. So that's the instruction. Then he, he reveals something about God's nature, about God's character. Put your trust in God instead. Okay. Who gives? Okay. So that's one thing. God is a giver. Whatever has been our experience in the past, maybe we did not have much as we were you know, growing up, or we do not have much even today, but understand, remember, and just remind yourself, God is a giver. God is the giver. Okay, So I'm going to put my trust in Him, because He gives. Put your trust in God, who gives. How does He give? Which means he's extravagant in his giving. He's generous in his giving. Okay, he's the one who gives richly all things. Okay, he's the one who gives. He gives richly. He gives all things. Lastly, to enjoy. Okay, so many times we think, okay, if I have things, if I enjoy, somehow I should hide it and enjoy. Right. See, and and also as Indians, you know, we have some things like, you know, things like don't count your chickens before they are hatched. Yeah, that's one thing. And then, if we are, you know, if we are very happy, I don't know, there are a lot kind, all kinds of superstitions, right? Don't, you know, if you are happy and if you laugh and you're smiling, then there will come a time when you're sad and you know you will be very very sad. Some kind of superstitions. I don't know if you've heard that. You know, growing up, we had, if you're going to laugh much, then you'll also cry much. So it's better you somewhere in the average, you just handle that. You know, don't don't laugh too much. Don't. Where did these things come from? <laughs> right? I mean, in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. That's who he is. He's probably cracking jokes, he's laughing. Right? Of course, there's uh, reverence and holiness and infinitely holy and, and unimaginable majesty and all that. But but this is who he is, right? So he is the one who gives richly all things to enjoy. So he, you know, when we enjoy material things, it's not a crime, it's not a sin. Okay. But hold on to things lightly. Okay. Hold on to things lightly, which means that. If, if, if it needs to be given away, don't have a strong grip on it and just say, God, no, I no. Have a loose grip on it, right? Because if you're holding tightly, that means that you're trusting in it so much, right? So he's the one who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Okay, so so from all these scriptures we see, and and there are many, many more. Like when God introduces himself, you know, this the I am names of God, for example, the covenant names of God, right? Um, right from the time when, he's, when he tells Moses, I am who I am, and and then there's, you see the covenant names of God coming out, uh, God at, at these points in history, you know, describing, um, introducing himself in many ways, and all that, you know, gives uh, a window into his character, his nature. And we see that he is the one who provides. He's the one who gives. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? If he's the giver, then why are the Christians poor? <laughs> okay. Why are the believers poor then? Why is there poverty in the world? Right? If God is you know, such a great God, He's a good God, then why is there suffering? That's the other bigger question, right? Okay, we're not going to answer that now. We'll come to that. Right? We we talk about yeah, any you have a question? So you know, these are some things, right? And uh, you know, why, why are people still struggling, still striving? Yeah, there are many factors, there are many, uh, many, you know, many reasons. But we can't attribute that to God. We look at that and we say, okay, God is 
you know he's not a giver he's not generous we can't we can't say that because in scripture is a totally different picture altogether yes we need to be careful in our handling of money so that money doesn't grip us we need to be yeah definitely but we look at god we understand that this is who he is okay uh, uh, online folks any questions that you might have anything that you might want to add okay ananda we, we can't see in our days we can't see materialistic blessings in our days is it uh like can you be specific like um, why can't these kind of miracles happen like fish catching uh Okay, my question is, how did you come to the conclusion that we are not seeing it? Right. If it happens more often, more frequently, right? Yeah. So the thing is, God has not changed. Okay, we know that. Um, he has not changed. So Anna's question is, okay, why are we not seeing more of it? Okay, the fact is that, okay, it, it's all put together in Scripture for us. It's all recorded. This is what happened, and it's recorded for us. Okay, now we can't come to the conclusion that um, it's not happening today, right? Because there's so much that is happening in the world. Uh, in the towns, in the cities, in the villages, where God is, you know, moving in a powerful way. Right? We hear stories of, okay, let's say if you take a village setting, you hear stories of, okay, this this cow was not giving milk, okay, and somebody laid hands, play, prayed in the church, right? They laid hands, prayed, and then next Sunday is a testimony, okay, it's it's giving milk, right? Uh, supernaturally, things have changed for for that person. That milk is livelihood. It's like money in the bank. Depends upon the person. So, uh, so that the same way, when you think flocks are, you know, multiplying and everything is fine, you know, this cow. Well, so we hear testimonies of that. Okay. So, uh, and in the city and in the, you know, one particular one person was saying, you know, uh, very recently, like, okay. I uh, during the pandemic or just before that, he actually lost a job. Then when he applied for an interview, he took a job. They they would they knew that he was not working, so they offered him much less than what he was currently getting. Let's say he was getting ten thousand. He they were offering him like seven five or eight, knowing that he was desperate. Okay, so he anyway took it. Okay, but then he he said after working and then. Another company offered a job, and they, he said that they offered more than what he was earning earlier. Okay, so it's like not even equal to what he was getting. But because he was praying, he said, "Lord, I'm I'm just committing this whole thing to you, and I know it's humanly not possible." Okay, um, he was talking about various factors, you know, different industry and this thing. But he just gave them like, "This is what I'm expecting." So what he got was. He said this double. So just for example, you know, 15 or even 20. Um, so of what he was earning. So things like that, where God is doing, we can attribute it only to God, right? Because people are being laying off, you know, people are being let go, econo econo economical situation and so on, where the favor of God, the hand of God, and uh, you can just say it's a supernatural act. It's a blessing. Right. So, um, so it's happening in many ways, um, but we just need to acknowledge. We just need to see the hand of God in it. You know, some things happen and we don't 
we just saying okay you know we, just, we can just pass by right see i'm sure people could say okay hey, they got lucky you know peter and his gang they got lucky to, they put in there yeah yeah they were saying the radio was saying that there was one you know shoal of fish coming into that area they got lucky they caught it people could just rationalize it and say okay no that's it but the thing is that god is doing things amazingly okay you know just to encourage i've never shared this before but i'm just sharing this um, but i you know i don't know how this happened okay now i'd like to have coffee in the morning before i go sunday mornings right sunday morning i leave home by uh, around 6:20 church sound check i'd like to have my coffee uh because i have my breakfast i don't have my breakfast i have my lunch so sometimes you know there is uh, okay a lot of things happening physically you know i'd like to have a coffee and go so uh, normally what i do is i take the packet milk packet and keep it uh, outside or keep it from the freezer i keep it down so that in the morning when i wake up you know i it's it's not hard so i can just boil it and so i just keep it down so that day i forgot <laughs> okay so i put two packets in the freezer i mentally made a note okay night before i sleep i want to take one packet down and keep it but it didn't happen yeah i forgot so i go to the freezer in the morning and uh, you know like one i put it inside one i just put outside you know i wanted to take one out so the one which is near the you know freezer door is frozen hard the one which is inside is not frozen at all okay now i can't even i i thought okay maybe it is something to do with the fridge you know maybe other things you know something happened where fridge did not work and because of it but the thing is that everything else is frozen inside milk is frozen the other thing is frozen but that one packet is not frozen so i asked my family you know my wife my, did you guys do anything with it did you take it out did you did you put it down did you put it I said no you didn't even touch right so i can't explain this now i was just thanking god praising god because i it was just a simple cup of coffee uh, i know we could have bought it somewhere outside but the fact is that he's a father right he's a father he cares he loves he loves to surprise and that's the only way i can explain it i can't explain it right it's that's the only way i can explain it it was something supernatural which i didn't ask for but it happened so i can just give thanks right i didn't like stand in faith and proclaim in nothing and i'm not saying that is bad we need to do that contend for our faith but this happened so yeah just to say that you know miracles happen every day right our god our heavenly father is there to manifest his glory right this happening so just be open to the fact that yes god i want to see it you know, for your glory of course right i want to see it i want to see you manifest your glory you manifest your power and do these things okay right i hope that uh, answers on okay so let's look at uh, we have uh, we have five more minutes let's look at the next topic which is god's guarantee to prosperous people okay so it's one thing to understand that okay this is god's nature this is god's character but can we say for sure you know that he guarantees this what's a guarantee when you buy a, some product they'll give you a warranty and a guarantee right what's a warranty what's a guarantee anyone warranty means okay so there's a support for the product okay you you they'll change the part whatever is this thing there's a warranty for maybe servicing parts for maybe one year okay what's a guarantee huh they will give you they will replace the whole thing okay they're saying hey this cannot go wrong right this cannot this will not stop this product will not that's a guarantee that they give 100% if by chance it happens we will replace it no questions asked and that's a guarantee right they'll take it back replace it with a fresh piece that's a guarantee okay so how can we be sure 
that God gives a guarantee that he'll prosper his people. Is there something like that? Right? Is there something? Can I, can I be guaranteed that God, yes, indeed prospers? Okay. Now, even before we go into that, I want us to you know, remember all that we studied right at the beginning. Our attitude matters, right? Our attitude towards finances. We can either have a great attitude or we can have a bad attitude. Okay. We can be either covetous, greedy, or we can be generous. We can either trust in material things and you know open up our life for a lot of unwanted uh, you know things to happen in our lives, or we can trust in God who richly gives us all things to enjoy. Okay, our attitude matters, our perspective of this really matters. Okay, so having said that, is there you know proof in scripture that God guarantees to bless his people? Okay, so let's look, look at just one, maybe. Okay, the, the first thing is that it's the very nature of God, God's nature. Okay, it is who, this is who he is. Okay, can you imagine God sinning, being unrighteous, being unholy? Can you? Right? Because it's his nature to be holy. It is the nature of God to be holy. Okay. So if you take petrol and uh, if you take a lighter and you light it up, what will happen if you take it close to the petrol? It'll. What will happen? Have, have you done that? <laughs> you better not, right? You just take it because of the fumes. Petrol is evap evaporating. Okay, you take it close to not even the liquid, just the fumes. It will catch fire. Why? Because that's the nature, right? It has the chemicals in it. When there's oxygen, when there's fire, then it will. It's immediately catch fire. It's flammable. There will be an explosion. To catch fire, right? That's the nature of petrol. So God is like that. His nature is to bless. Okay? He cannot not bless. His nature is to bless his people. Okay? Um, I think we'll stop here and then we'll give it, uh, I mean, we get into some of the reasons why it's God's nature to bless his people. Okay, so we'll stop here. Thank you, online students. We'll uh, meet in our next class. God bless.